Welcome to Finished Work International Ministries, a ministry that is on the cutting edge, changing lives around the world. As you let God in today and apply the word, expect a divine encounter and supernatural transformation. It is impossible for you to be defeated when you have the revelation of the will of God. It is impossible for situations to subdue you when you walk in understanding of what God is saying to you. Let the finished work of Jesus determine what you pray. When God is your source, you don't look back. You keep looking forward. You keep trusting. God, I trust you. Here's Apostle Faith Man Obueda. And we said if you don't understand God's love, it will be difficult for you to flow with others. It will be difficult for you to be effective in what God has called you to experience. Knowing that God loves you helps you to see things from his perspective. The love of God brings healing. There is a healing experience we come into when we have an understanding that God loves us. Jesus is the manifestation of the love of God towards us. I said that Jesus is the manifestation of the love of God towards us. When God gave us Jesus, he was demonstrating his love towards us. The love of God has nothing to be compared with. There is nothing we can compare with God's love for us. Not even sin can keep us away from his love. Because even in sin, his love is after you to bring you into repentance. You can only come into repentance when you know that God loves you. The knowledge of his love have the potential to keep you away from sin. And peradventure you fall into sin. It is by the knowledge of his love you come into repentance. When you have this understanding that God loves me. It doesn't matter what the situation may be in the natural it will lead you to his will. So we'll look at the love of God for you. We'll look at growing in the knowledge of God's love. If you're really going to be effective in your work of faith, you have to grow in the knowledge of the love of God, knowing that God loves you. But today we're going to look at how to love yourself. How to love yourself. There are a lot of people who don't know how to treat themselves. And sometimes it can also come from the knowledge of how they have been treated by others. How others have treated them, how some people have spoken to them in the past, how most people related with them and that affected their way of doing things. They look at themselves as not being worthy, not being qualified, not being the kind of person that God wants them to be. They look at themselves as to a person who has been dropped by others. But God doesn't want me to see my life as a life of rejection. He wants me to see my life as a life that is in his family. That we're, but I have come into the family of God. I'm expected to enjoy liberty. I'm expected to enjoy his glory, his mercy, and his kindness. But I can't treat myself right if I'm ignorant of the love of God for me. I can't treat myself right. If I'm ignorant of the love of God for me, if you're ignorant of God's love for you, you can't treat yourself right. You always believe you're nobody. You always believe that you're not qualified. You always believe that you don't have what it takes to make a difference. You always believe that it's not going to be possible. There are people, before the people even reject them, they have rejected themselves. They perceive rejection. They expect rejection. But that is not how God wants you to live your life. How to treat yourself. It begins with the story. Uh, with Sorry. It begins with the grace of God. When I know what grace have done for me. The grace of God is the proof that I have an opportunity with God. I have an experience with God. 
There is something that God wants me to experience because of his grace. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 8 saying that God is able to make all grace abound towards me. That God is able to make all grace abound towards me. So how am I supposed to treat myself? I have to treat myself in the light of God's grace. I have to treat myself in the light of God's grace. Not bringing myself to a place where I make a mockery of myself. Looking at myself, saying to myself, saying to myself, you are not worthy, you are not qualified, you are not good enough. If I say that to myself, I'm placing limits on myself. And that is not what God wants from me because when you place limits on yourself, it becomes difficult for your faith to flourish, for your faith to produce a God kind of result. So we have to treat ourselves from the light of God's grace. The grace of God proves that God cares for you. The grace of God proves that God has a plan for you. The grace of God proves that God has a provision for your life. The grace of God is an indication that you've been welcomed into the family of God. You are now a beloved in Christ Jesus. The grace of God is a proof that your past cannot control your future. The grace of God is a proof that whatever that happened to you in the past cannot stop what God has for you. Because when you walk in the knowledge of his grace, you will see the perfect picture. You won't see a picture of someone who is broken. You won't see a picture of someone who is rejected. You won't see a picture of someone who doesn't know where she's going to. Because when you have an understanding of the grace of God, it helps to strengthen your esteem. I want to say that again. I said when you have an understanding of the grace of God, it helps to strengthen your esteem. One of the things that help to strengthen our esteem is when we have the knowledge of the grace of God. It helps to strengthen your esteem. You're not going to see yourself from a perspective of someone who is conquered and defeated that is looking for liberty. Galatians chapter 5 verse 1 said, Stand fast in the liberty where which Christ has made you free. He said, we should not entangle ourselves again with the yoke of bondage. Why? Because in Christ Jesus we have liberty. In Christ Jesus we have what? We have liberty. You cannot truly enjoy your life without first accepting your life. You cannot truly, you know, for some people, because of the mistakes they have made in the past, they look at themselves and say, well, I'm not qualified for this. I'm not qualified for that. I don't think I'm able to make it in life. I don't think I'm able to, to come into a place of influence, into a place of power. I don't think I'm going to be successful in life. Because of the series of mistakes they have made with their life, let me say this to you. It doesn't matter the mistake you have made, the God's forgiveness is waiting for you. It doesn't matter the mistake you have made. God's forgiveness is waiting for you because there are a lot of people today that cannot enjoy good life because they look at their life from their mistakes. The mistakes they have made in the past. The mistakes they have made in the past. They had a child out of wedlock. Maybe business didn't work out well. Maybe they were abandoned in a marriage. Maybe they had a divorce or something happened. And they look at themselves as the worst of people. No, you don't have to look at yourself that way. You need to look at yourself the way God saw you. You are still an expression of the grace of God. I'm telling you. It doesn't matter the mistake you have made. God loves you. I want you to understand that your mistake cannot stop the manifestation of the love of God towards you. And when you have the knowledge of his love towards you, you will take advantage of that love. The love of God is our advantage. It doesn't matter what you're going through right now. The love of God is your advantage. It may look like life may look rough for you. Maybe some person who you have looked up to for a very long period of time, you expect them to look at you and tell you you're doing well. You expect them to embrace you. You expect them to celebrate you. But in turn, they rejected you or they despise you or they never believed in you. That should not stop you from looking at the love of God. You see, when you understand that God loves you, it will determine also how you treat yourself. Because for most people, people are treating them the way they present themselves. If you don't present yourself like a person that has a healthy emotion, people will be looking at you like someone they can mistreat. But if you present yourself as someone with a healthy emotion that God loves me and I love my life, you know, there is how people who love their life approach life. 
When you love your life, there are things you don't put on yourself. When you love your life, there are things you can't do to yourself. When you love your life, there are relationships you can't get into. Why should I get involved into a relationship that does not secure my future in God? Why should I get involved in a relationship that cannot strengthen me to be effective in my purpose? Loving yourself will, cause, will help you to come into a place of wisdom. I don't need this relationship because it's not going to help me. You don't keep relationship with people because uh, this guy is handsome. That guy is beautiful. You can't make decisions based on look because look can change. Age changes look. We have known that. doesn't matter the makeup that people put. When you look at them, you can tell how old they are for some people. I'm telling you. So you're not going to do relationship just based on look. You're going to do relationship based on purpose. Am I connecting with this person? What is going to help me get to the next level of my life? You're not saying yes based on loneliness. You're saying yes based on purpose. If you, see, if, you, if you say yes based on loneliness, what is going to happen is that after a period of time, you'll be back to where you started. Why? Because your yes was based on how you are right now. But God wants my yes to be based on the purpose he has in my life. He wants my yes to be based on his will. And this is why it's important to love yourself. Because when you love yourself, if someone is not trying to show love, or someone is not trying to care for you, it's not going to affect you. But if you don't love yourself, you'll be looking for love in all the wrong places. You'll be looking for someone that will love you, someone that will cherish you, someone that will celebrate you. So if you don't see that, you're hot. You're broken. You're offended. You feel bad because you're looking for acceptance. That is not what God wants us to do. God wants us to walk in the light of who we are in Christ Jesus. God wants you to love yourself. And it takes the knowledge of his love for you, for you to love yourself. No one can be successful in relationship if they don't love themselves first. You can't be successful in any relationship if you are dependent on the next person to show you all the love. Because nobody has that capacity to show you all the love. Nobody has all the capacity to show you all the love. And this is why it's important that you need to understand that God loves you first. That knowledge should secure your focus. That knowledge should help you see yourself the way he's looking at you. He's looking at you as someone that is blessed. Someone that is empowered. Someone that is going to be successful. Someone that is going to rise. Someone that is going to make a difference. I have to see myself the way God saw me. I want to say it again. I said, I have to see myself the way God saw me. I want to look at the scripture uh, in Matthew 22 from verse 36. Matthew 22. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Matthew 22. Matthew 22 from 36. Thank you, Holy Ghost. In Matthew 22 from verse 36. Watch this. Master, which is the greatest commandment in the law? He said, Master, which is the greatest commandment in the law, they were asking questions. I like it when people ask questions. Because when you ask questions, it helps to reduce a person's level of ignorance. One of the ways you reduce ignorance is by asking questions. Master, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your heart. And this is a very key point here. You will love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. And with all thy mind, this is the first and a great, this is the first and great commandment. So, you love the Lord your God with all your heart. You love the Lord your God with all thy soul and with all thy mind. That is how you love him. With all your soul, with all your mind. That simply means, like when Paul was writing, he said, don't be conformed to this world, but be it transformed by the renewing of your mind. Paul also went forward to establish, he said something, he said, Present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. He said, Present your body as a living sacrifice. Man is a spirit, he has a soul, he lives in the body. When we receive Christ, our spirit was recreated. And this recreated spirit needs a fellowship with God's word as it can be effective and productive. I said, this recreated spirit has to fellowship with God's word as it can be effective and 
uh, as it can be effective and productive because the only way God will lead me is going to lead me by my spirit. So if my spirit is not fellowshiping with his word, how can my spirit become the candle of the Lord to search, to connect, to follow? So he said here, yeah, Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. With all thy heart. That is how you're going to love him. With all your heart and with all thy soul. And he said, with all thy mind. Hallelujah. And that's so important. And look at what he said here in verse 39. He said, and the second is unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Thou shalt love, Matthew 22, 39. He said, and the second is like unto it. There is a first commandment, and there is a second commandment. He said, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So, I can't truly love my neighbor, or say I'm able to love myself first. And one of the most difficult things for people to do is to love themselves. They want others to give them the love. They want approval from this person. They want this person to look at them and say, you look beautiful, you look good, you look wonderful. They are always looking at somebody for approval. They are looking up for somebody to say something to them that will, can strengthen them and encourage them. But you need to learn to do that to yourself. I like it when Jesus did it in Luke chapter 4. We read from verse 18. and He said, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he has anointed me. Why is Jesus talking that way? The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. See, when you love yourself, you start acknowledging what is available to you. When you love yourself, you acknowledge what you have. When you love yourself, you begin to see the true picture of who you are. It is difficult for someone who badmouths himself, for someone who despises himself, for someone who don't believe in himself to see the true picture of who they are. You need to learn to celebrate yourself. Because if you don't see yourself the way God saw you, it will be difficult for you to enjoy life with him. When the psalmist said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, it's a picture of, of a man who has relationship with God. The Lord is my shepherd. His esteem was high. He was a man of high esteem. So he looked at himself and said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, I shall not want for peace. I shall not want for rest. So how do I treat myself? I'm going to treat myself the way Jesus treated me on the cross. Jesus treated your life with honor. He treated your life with justice. He treated your life with peace. He treated your life with abundance of mercy. He treated your life with forgiveness. So whenever you look at the cross, you're looking at the price that was paid for your life. The price that was paid for your life is so great that you don't have to allow anyone to put you down or to look at you and say to you, you are not good enough, you are not better enough, you can't go anywhere. No, you don't have to allow that to come to you. Because God loves you. If someone tells you you're not good in what you do, with wisdom you just tell them, I'm the best of God's creation. You need to learn to talk to yourself. You need to learn to see yourself the way God saw you. You are not the weak looking for strength. You are the strong that cannot go weak. You are not the frustrated looking for help. You are the blessed that cannot be frustrated. You need to have a right knowledge of your identity because it's going to empower you in your vision, in your assignment, in whatever God has called you to do. One of the greatest challenges that a lot of people face is lack of self-confidence. And that lack of self-confidence comes from not loving yourself. That's where it comes from. Lack of self-confidence comes from not loving yourself. When a person does not love himself, what happens is going to affect their confidence. How they approach life. How they approach situation. You see someone living in fear. There is something going wrong in his knowledge of who he is or who she is. You know, there is a lack of understanding, this, the fear of I'm not confident enough, the fear of I can't have it, the fear of I can't be there, the fear of I can't have it. That is not what God wants in your life. In 2 Timothy 1 verse 7, he said, for God have not given us a spirit of fear. Because what fear will do is that fear will stop you from walking in confidence. 
Fear will stop you from walking in boldness. Fear will keep you away from being who God wants you to be. Who God wants me to be is in more important to him than whatever that is happening around me. So he said here in Matthew chapter 22 verse 39 said, And the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. When last do you look at yourself and tell yourself, I'm doing well? When last do you look at yourself and tell yourself, I'm full of strength? When last do you look at yourself and say, there is greatness in me? When last do you look at yourself and say, I am beautiful? When last do you look at yourself and say, I am intelligent, I am brilliant? When last do you look at yourself and say, I can do it well? I like the way Paul talked. He said something that is important. He said, I can do all things through Christ that strengthen me. That's a man who loves himself. And he's talking to himself. He said, I can do all things through Christ that strengthen me. I can do all things. You see, when you love yourself, you see possibilities. When you love yourself, you see possibilities for yourself. You see possibilities when you, when you love yourself. You see possibilities for yourself. It doesn't matter what is happening around you right now. Because I love myself, I can rise above this limitation. It is difficult for a man so for God to walk with a man who does not love himself. You know why? His lack of great, his lack of esteem, uh, uh, healthy esteem, is going to affect his walk with God. Look at Jeremiah chapter 1. In Jeremiah chapter 1, when God was talking to Jeremiah, he said, I'm a child. Why was Jeremiah saying that? There was no confidence in him. And God said, don't say that. I'm, I, I will deem you a prophet. Imagine that the first time that God was talking to Jeremiah, and Jeremiah said, I accept the calling. I'm going to do it, Lord. There was no need for God to start preaching to Jeremiah or start talking to Jeremiah to tell him that before I form thee in the womb, I will deign you a prophet. Some conversation was as a result of how people look at themselves. They don't see themselves being confident. They don't see themselves being who God wants them to be. They look at their life as the weak looking for support. They look at their life as the poor looking for help. You know, someone said something today and I said, is not true. There is no continent on the face of the earth that is not rich. We only have people who don't know how to manage the wealth and the resources that God has given to them. But every human being on the face of the earth is rich with resources. Do you know one of the resources that God has placed in you is potential, latent energy, on top resources. There is no human being on the face of the earth today that does not have potential, that does not have ability. There is ability within you. Now, let me say this to us. Not because you have an ability within you. If you don't acknowledge the ability, if you don't acknowledge what God has given to you, do you know walking in the knowledge of your ability can increase the strength of your esteem? You knowing what you can do. I can do this. I can fix this. This is why it's important that you talk to yourself every day and say, I can do it. I have what it takes to succeed in life. I have what it takes to reign in life. I have what it takes to prosper in life. I have what it takes to be a success in life. I have what it takes to rise beyond the limitation. When David approached Goliath, he never saw him as a storm he can handle. He never saw him as a giant he can handle. His perspective was rooted in the knowledge that God loves him. Then when he looked at Goliath, he said, Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Who is this guy? Where is he coming from? This guy has no covenant backup. He was looking at Goliath. When David was talking to Goliath, he spoke to him in a such a way that Goliath knew that this guy was not ordinary. You know where it's coming from? Because he loved himself. You see, if you don't love yourself, even what God wants you to defeat can defeat you. If you don't love yourself, treating yourself right will empower your esteem. It will strengthen your esteem. Why do people dress well? There is something that good dressing will do to a person. Somehow it strengthens their esteem. Right? Because some people could spend so much money buying clothes, not because some of the clothes they need them, they can just wear it. One of the ways that people could strengthen their esteem is when they dress well. Because it has it speaks a lot about you. It says a lot about you, sorry. It says a lot about you. Someone can look at me, oh you look beautiful today. Oh, you're well dressed. That's why you gotta put yourself in a such a way that you can enjoy yourself. You have to treat yourself right. You want to treat everybody right, but have you treated yourself right? You want everybody to look good. Do you make yourself look good? Do you take time to work on yourself and say, okay, I'm losing some weight this season. 
I'm dropping some weight. I'm not going to eat this kind of food. I'm not going to eat this. I'm not going to eat that. I want to look like this in the next five years. I want to look like this in the next three months. You need to have goals for your life. You need to have a picture of what life you want to live. But some people, they think that, okay, I'm born again. But uh, how am I going to have this quality of life that God wants me to experience? Number one, if you want to have a great life, choose to believe what God has said about you. I said, if you want to have a great life, if you're, if you're going to love yourself and have a great life, you have to believe what God has said about you. What God has said about you. The word of God said, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Huh? Do you believe that? What do you think about that? It's, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Do you believe that? That you are the righteousness of God. Do you believe that? Do you see that picture? That I am a choosing generation. Because when you don't believe what God has said about you, you'll be looking for people to validate you. You'll be looking for people to approve you. You'll be looking for people to clap for you, to make you feel like you're somebody. But in the first place, you are responsible for your esteem. You're responsible for your esteem. So you have to believe in what God has said about you. Number two, you have to see what God saw in you. You have to see what God have invested in you. God have invested so much in you. There is so much that God has placed within you. This is why nobody should take you for granted. This is why you should not look at your life and say, well, nothing good is working in my life. Nothing good is happening. You, you shouldn't say that. This is why it's important the words that proceed out of you have a lot to say about your future. The words that come out of you, there are people when they start talking about themselves, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be weeping for them. You know, my heart, is, you know, you don't look at them and say, my God, you're talking about yourself like that? The way they talk about themselves, I'm not good at it. I don't think I can have it. Nobody loves me. Nobody cares for me. Life has always been like this. I know when it gets to my turn, that is how it's going to be. You know, you watch their words and you know that they are, they are, they are, they are self-defeating thoughts. They are self-defeating thoughts. There are thoughts that can defeat a person. And then they look at themselves and look at my life. Look at where I've ended with life. Their words are always like a weapon against their destiny. They are always using words that distract them from seeing the real picture of what God has invested in them. They look in a such a way that people always feel. I was telling someone today, I said, listen, when you testify what God is doing in your life, it helps your esteem. And it also strengthens your work with God. When you look at, if you look at the book of Psalm, you'll see where the psalmist was praising God all through. He was thanking him, oh God, I thank you. Know, he was praising God in his language. The psalmist was thanking God, was praising God in his language. So when you look at what God has done for you, and then you begin to appraise him, you begin to appreciate him, you begin to talk to him. There is how you look, you can't even get the help. People don't know this. There is how a person presents himself, and people look at the person as a scan. Why? Because they don't know how to present themselves the way God wants them to present themselves. When Jesus showed up, people know that Jesus was around, that Jesus was in town. That Jesus was going to change the story. Was going to change the story. He said he was in the house. Can you see what God has invested in you? Can you see what God has placed within you? Can you see the anointing on your life? One of the key things you need to write down is this. When you see what God has placed in you, it strengthens your ability to make progress. When you see what God has placed within you, what God has invested within you is strengthening your ability to make progress. Even if it's just one clothes you have or one shoe you have or whatever you have, you just make it neat and make sure you wear it well. You make it clean and make sure you wear it well. You don't present yourself like someone who is so needy. No. Because when you celebrate yourself, you attract potential investors. I'm telling you, there are people that want to invest into your life, but how you carry yourself will determine if they're going to invest into you. There are people that want to support your dream, but there is how you look, it becomes difficult for them to connect with you. How you present yourself, you know, when you walk into a mall or a place where they sell things, a shop, uh, the, the things are kept in a such a way that it should be attracting people to buy. It should be attracting people to buy. And it has their values. It has their prices. Your value is not being determined by God. Your value is being determined by how you present yourself. 
I want to say that again. I said, your value is not being determined by God. Your value is being determined by how you present yourself. How do you present yourself? You see, how you present yourself is so important. How you present yourself is so important. How you present yourself is so important. Whether it has to do with ministry, it has to do with business, it has to do with relationship. How do you present yourself with before people? Someone used to be around us and this fellow would just look, you know, in such a way, I said, what was wrong with you? Why didn't you make your hair? Or after, why didn't you put on your makeup? What was the problem? You know, sometimes people that say, where people look and they try to blackmail their boss. Oh, he's not helping. So how a person look, you know, when you look at the person, then you ask this question, what's going on? It's like the husband is not taking care of her very well. You know, people can dress like that and create a false impression about their marriage and create a false impression about their family. Or maybe the man is not helping her. That's what they will say. Maybe, and sometimes she may have all of these good clothing, but you know some people are even lazy to take care of themselves. They want to take care of everybody, but they can't take care of themselves. And taking care of yourself is the starting point of a life of strength. Being able to take care of yourself. Then you look at yourself and say, why do people save their best of clothes when they have functions, occasions? Let's say, for instance, weddings. So they want to wear up. So after the wedding, no more. Huh? Something like that. How can you live like a life? I've told you the story before. When I was very small, my mom used to buy Christmas clothes from the months of August, September, latex, October. The clothes I bought, the shoes I bought, but you can't touch them. That's what my mom used to do. And I don't like it. I said, when I grow up, I won't live like this. So she will buy the clothes. I will be seeing the clothes. You are in October, but you are seeing your Christmas clothes. Go and touch it now. It's not just seeing the clothes, it's to touch it. The only time I wore the shoe was the day they were measuring the shoe in the market. They carried us to market and we put our legs on the shoe. It's the next time you wear it on Christmas time. Be waiting. Why not we wear the shoe that day? Why not we wear the clothes that we are waiting for Christmas? And Christmas is so, it's a distance from October to Christmas. is not a fun, it's not a fun. No. It's not a joke, I'm telling you. For children, it's a very long distance. They're like two years ahead of you. So every time you wake up, you're looking at the shoe. The shoe is looking at you. You can't touch it. You know the law. So I didn't like it. So a man of God came and preached a message several years ago and said every day is Christmas. So every day is the day to have the best. And you can choose to have the best of life every day. And having the best of life is not based on how much you have. Let me tell you right now. Can you imagine someone was alive, they never treated themselves well, and they died and people start sharing their clothes. Ooh. All those clothes they say they're not going to wear, they're going to wait for function as they just died and they buried a sibling start sharing it. Oh, look at this tie. Beautiful tie. I will take this one. I will take this shoe. This is a, this is a phone. Oh, this is a, this is Mark and Spencer. This is, they are sharing all through his life. He was accumulating the clothing, but he never used them. He never used them. I've heard stories. Someone was telling me his in-law one time was bought. He had, the guy wears so much clothing. He said there are clothes, there are watches that have not been used. They just ordered them. They have not been used. They have not opened them. Shoes that has not been used. So the man died. They started sharing the whole thing. Why not enjoy yourself? Why not... Pay attention to your life. Why not have a personal conference with yourself and say, from today, it's me. From today, the best of me needs to come out. Why are you saving your gold for function? So when my daughter will marry, I'll bring her this gold out. Why not wear it today? Why are you waiting for when your daughter will marry? Why would you put your happiness, your joy to your daughter's event? Why, why are you doing that to yourself? Why are you waiting? Okay, when I, like my mom used to say something many years ago. She said, any day my brother will graduate from school. My brother many years ago, he said she's going to drink Coke. Said, man, look at Coke and buy it and drink. She was waiting for that, my brother to come out of school to buy Coke and drink. So what stopped me from walking to shop and buy a Coke right now and drink if I want to buy a Coke? 
You see, for so many of us, we always think that when I finally build that house, when I finally drive that car, when I finally get that degree, that is when life will start. When the day I will get married, I will be happy. I will do. See, let me say this: you, why not just start your life? There are a lot of people that are not living their life. They are waiting for an event that will initiate living. Why are you waiting for an event to initiate living? Okay, we have, we have gotten a house right now. Now let's start living our house. How can you live that way? When I get my car, I'm going to now be relaxed. I'm going to be happy. I'm going to live my life. Why not? When you're walking on that street, just enjoy it. I just noticed that it's a season of your life that if you don't maximize it, if the next season comes in, you can't be able to maximize it. Hallelujah. Taking care of yourself. It's time to take yourself serious. Hallelujah. I said what? It's time to take yourself serious. You know why? Because if you don't, it will be difficult for God to use you. The man was hiding, and God said, Oh, mighty man of valor. He said, mm? <laughs> Oh, mighty man of valor. God was calling, Oh, mighty man of valor. <laughs> like my pastor would say, mm? <laughs> he was, Is it me you're talking to? <laughs> God, did you look at everybody? You're calling me mighty man of valor. Because in the first place, the steel was crushed. So, there, there needed to be an announcement, oh mighty man of valor. But why was there a sense of saying, oh mighty man of valor? But because he, he was not in the place where his esteem was strong. Sometimes God has to preach to people and preach to them and preach to them. But if they have accepted the knowledge of who they are, no need for much preaching. Instruction and mission. Instruction and mission. Instruction and mission. Because they understand what he's talking about. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So God is going to use a man who believes in himself. So the next time you see yourself, what are you going to say to yourself? Oh. <laughs> the next time you look at yourself in the mirror, what are you going to say to yourself? You're going to look at yourself the way God saw you and say, from this day forward, I divorce disappointment. I divorce depression. There are many things we need to break out from. So stop worrying about the needs of others. Take their needs to God. Anybody? This person, this child, that child, instead of casting the care on the Lord, they're not that we have the care on themselves. You know what happened? Heart issues. They slump. Heart attack. High blood pressure. There are people that need to consistently take drugs to keep their blood pressure going in the right, a right direction. Why? So much pressure. <laughs> so much. Why are you putting yourself under so much pressure? Why are you trying to look like God before people when you know your name is Esther? When you know your name is Peace? When you know your name is Shamin? When you know your name is Andrew? When you know your name is Faithman? When you know your name is John? Why are you trying to be like El Shaddai? You can't be El Shaddai. It's only God that can be El Shaddai. Why are you going to bed worrying about it when you have to hand it over to God? This is why you wake up and you are tired. How many of you sleep and you wake up and you are still tired? I look like you didn't sleep. Wave your hand. There were so many issues going on. That was, you didn't rest. You say you're lying down, but you're looking at the ceiling for three hours. You are rolling throughout the bed. Anytime that kind of thing is happening, there is an issue going on. Rolling throughout the bed, you roll to this point. You're wondering, why not just say, God, I just give it to you. Do you know it's difficult for people to hand over something to God and allow God to take care of it? How many of you know that? Do you know that it's difficult for somebody to hand, to hand over something to God and say, God, I want you to have your way in it. I want you to have your way in it. God, I want you to take over this matter. I want you to take over this issue and let it rest. A lot of people are here to do that. Two things I want to do with my life. I want to preach the gospel and I want to enjoy life. I want to preach the gospel. I want to really enjoy my life. I want to talk about enjoying life. is the ability to take care of yourself. Learning to pace yourself. Learning to rest yourself. Learning to say to yourself, hey, myself, today is near you well. Today, what are we doing? We're doing myself. That's what we're doing today. Myself, you're going to eat well and just sleep for six hours. Non-stop. 
Myself today, you just drive and just come back and take care of yourself, myself. Somebody says, are you being selfish? No, I'm being God-minded. That's not being selfish. That's not being selfish. It's being God-minded, taking care of yourself. And you look at the Bible said, and God, and God rested. Why did he have to rest? Jesus was sharing one time and he said to them, come, let's rest for a while. The guys wanted to do something. He said, come, let's rest for a while. Come, let's rest for a while. Even in trying to have children, for your, some of you young people, single people that are watching me, you're about to get married. You should know when, how many children you want to have. As you know that you don't need much pressure. I was sharing a story with her about a lady that she knew many years ago. And oh, that story was so pathetic. Got me back close to seven children and was going for the eighth one and she died. Who sent her? What, are she, what is she looking for? What are you looking for? What are you looking for? You know, a lot of people are, they, they, they don't have a clarity of vision. You need to know how many kids. I can take care of one. I can take care of two. It, you're not in competition with anybody. Because many years ago, when we were living with our parents. We used to have these neighbors. They have just two children. So I was wondering, why did the man have two children? I used to feel for them. Because we are many. <laughs> We have many, we have many tribes in our house. <laughs> so when I see them, they're just, I just be wondering, why, why couldn't they have more children? Yeah, when I grew up, I understand. I understand. When I grew up, I understand having understanding why the two children. You see, you need to know what you can handle. You see, and let me say this to you, for every young person that want to get married, the first purpose of marriage is not to have children. We need to establish that clear. The first reason why you're going into the marriage is not children. Because if that is why you're going into the marriage, after the children has come, no more marriage. That's why I see some people today, they are together, but they are not together. If they take their children out of that place, there is no relationship. All the relationship meets on the children. I was somewhere, one day, I was teaching many uh, somewhere, and I said to them, if you have a daughter that is two years old right now, Enjoy her, relate with her, but look at the next 20 years that she's leaving your house. And that is how life is. This is why some people, when they want to get married, their parents start fighting. I will tell you why all of those family politics start. The girl wants to get married, and the mom says, no. Why is she saying no? She said, I don't like the guy. And they went and, she went and brought another guy. Handsome guy, full with the Holy Ghost. I don't like this one. Where is he from? I don't want to put him here. It's from that town, so, so, and so, please. And he said, nothing like that one. You know what she's doing? She's used to bonding with her daughter, not her husband. And now the daughter wants to leave the house. She's finding it difficult to release her. See, be careful how you bond with your children. Because that may be one of the challenges why people are going to have leaving the home, trying to be by themselves. Bond with your husband. Not with the children, bond with your husband, bond with your husband, bond with the person that married you, love your children, train them, cultivate them, instruct them, develop them. But if you bond with your son, this is why when some guys get married, their mother comes to live with them and leave their, his husband and come to live with the guy and then start bossing the guy's wife. You know why? He, she's used to bonding with the son. She and the son is more close than the husband. So instead of that, I want to go and see a Kenne. I want to go and stay with a Kenne. He said, for what? What happened? Why are you going to stay with He said, I just want to keep in company. Keep in company. What about a Kenne's wife? He said, no, I just, you know how a Kenne used to be. Let me go and stay with him. She has gone to stay there. Six months, she has not come. The bond, they had a bond. The bond is there. She didn't break the bond. So anytime a Kenne's wife misbehaves, she learns with her bad. What should they give you? They come. And she comes to this kind of mentality, this kind of passion that, hey, why should you do that to my son? Oh, this is working. Thank you. Thank you. And if she comes with that kind of mentality, what are you doing here? Well, you're stressing a connect so much because of the bond with a connect. That bond is not of God. You love your children. You raise them as they can be by themselves. Then bond with your husband. Bond with your wife. Some people right now, you take the children out of that marriage. No more marriage. 
The children is what everybody is using as their way peace. No, but that's not how it should be. You have to enjoy the relationship. That's why when some people are getting old, relationship becomes bored. You know why? Because at the beginning, I had a friend of mine, he got married for over close to five years, didn't have children. I don't know somebody was doing. Let I get to realize that they were bonding for all of those years. They were bonding. They were trying to be more intimate to themselves before the children will arrive. As when the children, because when children start coming, you're looking at the next 22 years, the next 25 years, exit, exit, exit. <laughs> exit. So if you build a very big house, and if you're calling your wife from the other point, say, honey, where are you? I'm in the sitting room. Okay. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You see, you see, life is quite different at that point. And this is why you need to take your relationship with your wife serious for all of us that are married, for all the married people watching this broadcast. You need to take your relationship with your wife serious. You know why? Because if your son is 15 years right now, the next 10 years. If your daughter is 15 years right now, the next 10 years. The next 10 years is a strategic year in your house. There are a series of weddings going on. And where they means departure. Am I helping anybody? You're very quiet. You're giving your friend. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Maybe somebody was not thinking about this. No, no, Pastor. Pastor, you told us you are going to tell us about how to love ourselves. Yes, it's part of the love. Because loving yourself comes with this healing for you. You just learn how to spend time with yourself. How to spend time. That is why it's important that all through school, you shouldn't allow your children to go to boarding school from primary school to university. Boarding school all through. Some people are doing it. That's what they're doing right now. So when they come back, they marry and they go. <laughs> is it the life of it was for me? That's what I'm telling you now. The guys in, not, in primary school, they, they're looking for boarding school they can put him. They say, well, why are you putting them in boarding school? In primary school, they say, no, we have a job. We need to keep to our jobs. One job, I don't have time to take care of him. Okay. Secondary school, what happened? Boarding school. I don't have time to take care of him. The university, what happened? Boarding school, I don't have time. And before you realize, you know what happened? That child never had family relationship. No family relationship. Some people think it's uh, luxury. It's influence. But the truth of the matter, most times there is no bonding. But especially when your kids are two years, they are three years, they are four years, they are five years, let them be around you. Let your children be around you. Let them stay around you. Let them grow up around you. Know that when it's time for them to exit, there is a bond and they can always come back to see you, always come back to talk with you, always come back to relate with you, because in the first place there is a bond. But there are people that have left home today, they don't want, they don't want to go back home, because home used to be a crazy place. It's not a place where you can enjoy. There's always a fight. There's always a problem. It's not a place I don't want to go there, see mom and dad, and I start fighting them. And let me just stay here. You know that kind of mentality. We can put it in our kids on knowing to us. So sometimes you make peace at home, not because of just you, but just to create an environment for your children to be relaxed. Hallelujah. So in Matthew 22, let's make progress. In Matthew 22, verse, verse 38, he said, This is the first and a great commandment. Verse 39. And the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Verse 40, on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophet. On these two commandments, the first commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your might, with all your strength, with everything you got, to so love him. And then it's all about the love for yourself. Let me tell you one of the ways you love yourself. You love yourself by giving yourself break from things that can break you. You need to give yourself break from things that can break you. You need to break up from the things that can break you. Are there things that can break you? Are there things that can make you lose your focus and lose your mind and lose your passion for living? Are there things that can stop you? It's time you begin to say, I detach from this. Their relationship with negative influence that extracts you from enjoying yourself. Are there bills that you're trying to pay that you ought not to be paying? 
Are you putting yourself in a shoe where you're, you're hurting yourself more and then you're pleasing the next person? You don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. True love is sacrificial, but true love cannot be subjected. It's sacrificial, but it cannot be subjected. Thank you, Father. To treat yourself right, you need to believe in yourself. I said to treat yourself right, you need to believe in yourself. To believe in yourself. To look at yourself and say, I'm a mighty man. I'm a great person. I'm a great woman. You're talking to yourself. Sometimes you need to say this to yourself until it gets into your spirit. You need to say it to yourself. Because life can present to you situations that make you feel like, man, I don't think I can cross over this. So you need to talk to yourself. By yourself. Talking to yourself. I am intelligent. I am beautiful. I am blessed. You are talking to yourself. You are talking to yourself. Because you need that for you. You are talking to yourself. I have understanding. I know what to do. I am wise in making decisions. I am blessed. I'm anointed. I'm going to produce the God kind of result. I receive ideas. I'm a great person. You have to say that to yourself. Why should you say that to yourself? Let me tell you what it does for you. Psychologically, you're repositioning your life. You're repositioning your life. There is something you're doing to yourself. So it's difficult for someone to look at you and say, well, I'm not going to love you anymore. But you're used to loving yourself. <laughs> you're used to loving yourself. You're used to having a great esteem. So it doesn't matter if she loves you or she doesn't love you. It doesn't really count. But you know what counts? What you do for yourself. Talk to yourself. Talk to yourself. Talk to the greatness in you. And that was what David did. When he stood before Goliath, he never saw himself as a defeated man. He never saw himself as something that Goliath can trump on. He looked at Goliath and said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Because he knew how to talk to himself. Talk it to yourself. Don't leave the house depressed. Leave the house strengthened. I said, don't leave the house depressed. I said, leave the house strengthened. You start talking to yourself. That is one of the most difficult practices for many people. They can't talk to themselves. They can't talk to themselves. Many years ago, I was telling myself, your voice will be in every country in this world. People will be listening to you all over the world. I will just come to my bedroom and I'll be talking to myself, preaching to myself, talking. Because if you don't see the picture, you can't come into the future. You need to see the picture. And that picture comes from knowing who you are. The true knowledge of your identity is one of the key components for success. The true knowledge of your identity is one of the key components of success. Being able to know who you are. Take care of your life. Watch how you treat yourself. 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 It's so important. Watch how you treat yourself. Don't go to places where you are not needed. Don't go to places where you are not needed. Don't go to places where you are tolerated. Go to places where you are celebrated. Don't get involved in a relationship where you are being tolerated. Might just help her now. Let me just help him. No! Get involved in a relationship where you are celebrated. Go to places where you are honored. It is an error to walk into an environment where they dishonor you because it's going to damage your esteem as a person. There are places I can't get you, even if you bring invitation on my table, I just turn. No. 
I've got to a place where I'm honored. I've got to a place where I'm celebrated. I've got to a place where I can be valued. Even Jesus said something. He said the prophet is not honored in his own country. I will explain so many things about that to you. A prophet is not honored among people who are familiar to him or her. That familiarity is the reason why they reject that ministry. Is it not this guy we saw becoming a, uh, carrying woods around neighborhood and, and carrying those two by two, those two by three, those plants, and now he said he's a prophet of God. What kind of prophet is that? It's difficult for them to receive from him. It's difficult for them to take ministry from him because, you know why? Because they, they, they are not doing it the way they should do it. When people are familiar with their pastor, they become difficult with what the man or the woman would do to bless them. We have seen people break forth in business in millions and succeed and do big things. They just believe me. I just sit on the, on the phone and pray and said, I, I speak over your business. I command that business to go make. I say, man of God, I believe that. And a few weeks later, you're hearing they're doing exploits in places. And that is amazing. Why are you connected with the anointing? And somebody else can be around that anointing and it's not being lifted up. Because when it comes to the things of the spirit, value is your resources. When it comes to the things of the spirit, value is your resources. What you value determines what will be released towards you. What you value. What you value. Man of God was sharing something many years ago with us and he said, he was in a meeting and then he took at the sister and said, this year you're going to marry. I said, yes, yes. I've been hearing it. He said, since, you know why? Attitude. Be careful when something is repeated twice doesn't mean it has lost its value. Be careful. When you hear prophetic word, it comes the first time, it comes the second time, it comes the third time, and that word keeps coming. Don't get to a point and saying, this is how the other pastor told me last week. This is how the other prophet told me. That's what it, the people have been telling me, they will not receive it. You know why? Familiarity will not let manifestation to happen. Because at this point, they are used to hearing, but there, there is no conception taking place. Because you needed conception for manifestation. There can't be manifestation except there is first conception. So God can walk up to you right now and say, I have blessed you with this. I have given you this. And two weeks later, someone has come back and tell you that same thing that God has spoken to you. Maybe one day later, someone has come in and said, look at what God is going to do. Six years again, someone called. Ah. He said, I've been hearing If you're not careful, you say, I've been hearing it. I've been hearing it. At that point, you're no longer, your level of value for that word has started dropping. Because now you're waiting for manifestation and you're not seeing the manifestation. You're feeling frustrated as a result of the delay that is going on. So what am I going to do? I'm to be a believer. Amen. Amen. I'm, I'm receiving that word as if it's the first time. Then I take my seed and offering whatever I just saw into it. Say, that word I just heard, I seal it in the name of Jesus. I believe it. It before, but I'm not going to be able to I've heard it before. I'm going to be able to I'm hearing it for the first time. Why? You know why? It will strengthen my faith to keep it. It will strengthen my faith to do what? To keep it. But if I be, oh, I just heard it. They prophesied to me last week and said I was going to have a car. Well, look at now where today is Wednesday. The car has not come, so what is really happening? And now you are here prophesying again. <laughs> Let's believe God. Amen. Then the car didn't show up that week. Then two weeks later, someone come and see the Lord giving you a car. <laughs> you are the third person confirming it. A lot of Christians are in confirmation level. Confirm it. Confirm it. You just confirmed it again. Oh my God. I'm receiving so many confirmations. Move from confirmation to manifestation. And how do you move from confirmation to manifestation? You have to aggressively believe, you know. You take that word and say, this is the word of God for me. To take care of yourself, you have to believe what God has said about you. Watch what you speak to yourself. Watch it. Watch what you say to yourself. And also watch what others say to you. What do people say to you? What kind of words do people say to you? For some people, they are in joke. And someone look at them and say, look at this man, go ahead. They are joking. How can someone call you a mango head? And they say, you're playing. No, you can't be mango head. Hallelujah. So you got to be careful of the kind of words thrown around. What kind of words are, are, are you playing with? What kind of words come out of you? What kind of words come out of your friends? 
The words that should be coming out should be words that bring exaltation, that strengthen you, that empower you. Someone look at someone and say, look at this dull brain. Hey, how can someone tell someone is a dull brain, still want to keep that kind of brain? Oh, you severe it. I said what? You severe it. How can someone say that to you? And when people say things like that, if that person doesn't know how to remove that, it becomes a limitation. Because there are many people today struggling with what was spoken to them. You're good at nothing. I know you will not make it. You know some parents even say things like that to their children. I know I'm just wasting my money paying for the exam. I know I'm just wasting my money. Do you know this? I'm just wasting my money. If you're wasting your money, keep your money. Bring it as an offering to church. If you're not sure where to take it to. Can I amen now? That man doesn't look like somebody that knows what I'm talking about. Instead of wasting his souls. Because when someone says, I'm just wasting it. I know this man I'm giving you a business. I'm just wasting it. Let's, I know in the next one month you come back to ask me for money. You've already prophesied. So one month she appeared again. Why not pray? Say, I know this is the last time you come and ask me for money. That God will prosper you to a point that you will be able to remember to call me. The only time you come is to give me testimony. You're sending them for me. Hmm. I just gave a hundred thousand. I know three weeks from now she'll be back. What will I do now? Let me be waiting for her. You said it. You're the prophet of your own life. They are coming back. Wait, three weeks, you see. And see, can they come I don't know where in church. Him. And the judge showed up and said, And see, I came to see you. He said, For what? <laughs> remember now. <laughs> he said, Remember what? Remember what? <laughs> remember what? <laughs> remember now. Don't come again. Yes. Because you yourself have not released them. You like them bothering you, like them around. Some people you have to release them and pray for them and say, You, from today, you'll be responsible in Jesus' name. You must be responsible in the name of Jesus. And I see you being responsible. You're very, very responsible in Jesus' name. The next time you come back, you tell me testimony of what God is doing. See this money, take it in Jesus' name. Go. You'll be very responsible. There are people you have to do send forth party for them. You and them, you just to be there and say, I'm buying Pepsi. Sorry, bro. I'm not advertising anybody. Drink this Pepsi. You see this money? You see this one? To them releasing you. Go and become somebody for yourself. And I pray that you to be well with you. What I try to let him know, it's time to grow up. It's time to do what? It's time to do what? To grow up. Because there are many people who are nursing around us that are not growing up. Some family members. They don't want to grow up. They are always hooking up to you. But you have to win them off you. As you can be able to live the life you want to live. Hallelujah. So what you say to yourself, finally, a Christ-centered image. You need to have this. This is so important. Now you have a Christ-centered image. You see yourself in the beauty of the Lord. Who are you? A chosen generation. A royal priesthood. A peculiar person. A Christ-centered image. Whenever you walk, you walk with so much elegance. You walk with so much joy. You walk with so much peace. Don't, don't let people catch you looking like you're helpless. Let people see you being in a place of blessing. People will not begin to ask you, what is really happening to you? I hope you're fine. I hope you're good. I hope you're this. I hope you're that. Because most of those questions sometimes come from how we presented ourselves to a person. A Christ-centered image. What, what does it mean to have a Christ-centered image? Jesus was sharing. Let's read that scripture. I'll be done with that scripture. Let's look at the uh, Luke Gospels. Thank you, Holy Spirit. St. Luke Gospels. St. Luke. Chapter 4. And let's do verse. Let's do verse uh, let, let, let's do verse 17. In St. Luke Gospel chapter 4, verse 17, he said, And there was and, and there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. The book was delivered to him. And when he has opened the book, he found the place where it was written. He found the place. You are the one to find your place. You are the one to find your place of strength, your place of destiny. You are the one to find what God has spoken to you. What have God spoken to you about your life? 
How about your future? You can go from losing a job to becoming a job creator. You can go from being homeless to building a business on real estate. Hallelujah. You can go from not having to having more and more. It's so important. You can go from, and he said here, and there was, and there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he has opened the book, when he has opened the book, he found the place. He was the one that opened the book. There is a book concerning you, you have to find it. There are things God has spoken concerning your life. It's already in the word of God. You need to find it. Whenever you read scriptures and you find the promise of God, see it, say it to yourself. Say it to yourself. Look at those promises of God as a word from God to you. I am a choosing generation. You gotta say to yourself, over and over, I'm a choosing generation. I'm a chosen generation. I'm a royal priesthood. My memory is blessed. You need to say that to yourself. My memory is blessed. Why are you saying that? You're saying that to energize the Christ, uh, to, 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 to cultivate the Christ centered image, to develop the Christ centered image. And he said, he found the place where it was written of him. Verse 18 said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Why am I trying to read this scripture to you? Jesus knew who he was. And because he knew who he was, it was easy for him to bring ministry to people. So those who despise his ministry could not limit his ministry from reaching those his ministry was designed to reach. Those who look at him and said, who is this Jesus? That couldn't stop him because he knew who he was. You see, when you know who you are, you walk in confidence. Nobody can put you down. No, some people can look at you and say, well, you don't drive what I drive. You don't live where I live. You don't have what I have. And then they try to size you up. Don't let people do that to you. You are the image of God. You are created in God's image. You need to see yourself the way God saw you. Maybe you're a pastor watching me. You may be pastoring a church of one person, but if God has called you to do ministry, it means that God wants you to do it so effectively that you don't have to be discovered by what you're seeing right now. You need to stay focused because if you do, you will get to your destination. Don't let nobody put you down and look at you and say, what do you think you're doing? No! A great esteem is required in the pursuit of purpose. I said, what? A great esteem is required in the pursuit of purpose. A great esteem is required. You're starting a job right now. Maybe the job doesn't look like a, a job that has a promising future, but with your words, you can make it a promising future. You're creating it. You're creating your future. You tell yourself what God has told you. He found the place. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. A Christ-centered image does not see limitation. It sees possibilities. A Christ-centered image. A Christ-centered image. A Christ-centered image does not see limitation. It will always see possibilities. Always see possibilities. With God, all things are possible. It doesn't matter if you're in depth right now. You can rise from that level to get into greater heights in life. I'm telling you. Wealth and riches are in your house. That's how God wants to, you to see yourself. Wealth and riches. I am blessed by going out. Don't see yourself as a person looking for the blessing. See yourself as the blessed person. Don't see yourself as, oh, I'm looking for the blessing. No, we're not looking for the blessing. We are the blessed people. Ephesians 1 verse 3 said, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who had blessed us with all what? All spiritual blessings. I'm blessed with all spiritual blessings. So I'm carrying the blessing. What are you carrying? What are you carrying? So when let's go for interview. Talk from the blessing dimension. When next you go for business, talk from the blessing dimension. Somebody may come to your shop to buy something and say, yeah, you're selling this for five naira. And you're selling it for five naira. I say, why are you selling it for five naira? Other places are selling it for two naira. I say, this one is different. Why is it different? There is something about it. They buy it, it will get better. Anointed people do better sales. And I'm here to remind you there is something unique about you. There is something unique about your future. There is something unique about your destiny. You don't need to look at yourself the way you are right now. See yourself from the finished work of Jesus. See yourself from where God has positioned you. And when Jesus said this, you know what of the things that happened when he said this? The, the faith of people begin to rise to receive. Their faith started advancing to receive. Because Jesus has said, the Spirit of the Lord goes upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel. If you hear him preach, things will change. 
to heal the broken hearted, to preach deliverance to the captive and recovery of sight to the blind. Hallelujah. To set at liberty them that are bruised. Can I say this to you? God loves you. Don't allow anything to take that away from you. Like my pastor will always say, who you are is in the heart of the Father. Huh? Who you are is in the heart of the Father. In the heart of the Father, God. He said, who you are is in the heart of the Father. And tonight I'm here to say to you, God loves you. God has a plan for your life. He has a plan for your future. Don't focus on the mistakes you made five years ago. The mistakes you made ten years ago. Maybe you've been making a particular kind of mistake for a long period of time. But I hear God saying, the mistake should not be the focus. My purpose for your life should be the focus. It doesn't matter how many times you have missed it. It doesn't matter how many mistakes you have made. It doesn't matter how many times you have fallen into a particular sin. There is a grace here tonight to pick you out of that pain and position you into a place of peace and rest. And that grace is available. Can we begin to thank the Lord right now? Let's give the Lord a praise. Yes, it's time to treat yourself according to the word of God. It's time to see yourself the way God saw you. It's time to look at your life from the perspective of his will. It's time to walk in the consciousness of his will for your life. His plan, his purpose for your life. There is a dream with your name on it. There is a vision with your name on it. It doesn't matter the mistake you have made. The blessings of the Lord is in operation. The purpose of God is in operation. The blessings of the Lord is in operation. It's time to look at yourself the way God saw you. It's time to picture yourself based on the knowledge of his finished work for your life. God has blessed you believe it he has anointed you believe it he has increased you believe it he has a plan for your destiny believe it he's going to take you to great places believe it this light affliction cannot be compared to the glory that is going to be revealed believe it you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus do what believe it greater is he that is in you than what is in the world do what believe it lord i thank you lord i give you praise your world is true for every of you watching it right now watching this broadcast god loves you god has a plan for your life he has a destiny for you he has a, there is a greatness within you that the spirit of god is going to help you come into a greater manifestation of greater things thank you holy ghost thank you holy ghost Oh, why were you praying the Spirit? And if you're watching this broadcast right now and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, the greatest thing you can ever do with your life is to come to the person of Jesus. He has answers for your question. He has wisdom for your issues. He has direction for your purpose. He has word for your destiny. And when you come to him, he brings you into a place of healing, into a place of strength. There is power. In the name of Jesus. So if you're watching and you want to receive him as your Lord and Savior, you can say this after me. Lord Jesus, I confess with my mouth. I believe in my heart that God have raised Jesus from the dead. Thank you, Father, for saving me. Amen. If you pray that prayer, that means you're born again and you will not remember sin. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We want to encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's Faith Man Teachings on YouTube. You can subscribe to Faith Man Teachings on YouTube. And also you can watch at finishworktv.com. A live transforming broadcast every day 24 7 every day. Bring you for God's word from finishworktv.com. And also you can get our book on Amazon. For the things you need to know about your future. It's available on Amazon.com. Hallelujah. And if you're watching today and you want to give an offering, it's our, it's our offering time. We're about to give an offering. And you want to give an offering, you can go to finishworktv.com and slash giving and use your MasterCard, your credit card, or debit card, whatever card you're using, and you're able to go through. May the blessings of the Lord rest upon you until our next broadcast. Don't forget this. There is greatness in you. And Jesus is coming soon.